This is a case walkthrough of case number 172, a patient with severe leg pain. So we'll start by putting the patient on the monitor. And she clearly has an area of redness to her left leg. And on the monitor is tachycardic and febrile. So let's start talking to the patient. So she has left leg pain. That's quite severe. Let's find out a little bit more details. How long has this pain been for? Okay. Did you injure the leg? No injury. And a friend tried to inject a vein, and that is likely this cause of the infection. Let's find out a little bit more about her substance use history. Okay. Do you use any other drugs? Okay, she's just on heroin right now, so we don't have to worry about alcohol withdrawal at the present time. Let's check for associated symptoms. Any chest pain or shortness of breath? Because that can certainly be DVT and PE. No, okay. Any abdominal pain, vomiting, or diarrhea? No abdominal pain, vomiting, or diarrhea. Good. Can you feel the toes on the leg? Just looking for compartment syndrome. Can feel toes, but it hurts. Okay. How high has your fever been? Okay. And then lastly, any coughing? No coughing. Good. All right. Let's get her medication history. What medications are you on? Do you have any drug allergies? And where do you live? A little bit of social history just to understand what her other needs might be. Okay, so she's currently staying at a friend's house. An examination now. Let's take a look at her circulation. Cardiac exam, she does not have any appreciable murmurs. She's at risk for endocarditis. Her lung exam seems clear. Abdominal exam is reassuring. Musculoskeletal exam reveals the swelling of the leg, redness, and tenderness outside of the area of redness, which is certainly concerning for deep space tissue infection. Okay. All right, let's start with some stabilizations, including inserting an IV. She's tachycardic, so let's give her a liter of fluids. And given how sick she is, I think getting a second IV would be very reasonable because she will likely need multiple infusions. All right, with the fluids going in, now let's come up with our differential. So for the leg, I think first is cellulitis or superficial skin infection. My concern is for necrotizing soft tissue infection. Uh, I'm also concerned, given her vital signs, that she may develop sepsis. And she's at risk for DVT. And there's also a possibility of a compartment syndrome developing if the swelling gets bad enough. Okay, so her vital signs have gotten a little bit better. Let's give her one more liter of fluids. And now let's start doing some testing. So for bedside tests, I'd want to take a look at the Doppler of the leg, an ECG. I would want to take a look at her lower extremity uh, venous system and soft tissues. So let's see what our bedside testing gives us. She's got Doppler pulses. Her EKG is sinus, but sinus tachycardia consistent with acute infection. She has normal compression of the deep venous system, so no sign of DVT, and she has cobblestoning consistent with an acute infection, but there's also maybe some gas in the soft tissue, so we'll want to get some imaging of that. Let's start with some labs now. Basic pre-op labs are indicated, and we'll want to check her lactate to see what her volume status is like. LFTs, since she's at risk for hepatitis, and a urine to make sure that we're covering all our bases for infection sources. So her kidney functions a little bit impaired, 
She has a very high white blood cell count. She has a high lactate. Her urinalysis looks clear. All right, let's get some imaging. So uh, in terms of plain film imaging, I would still want to take a look at her chest to make sure that there's no signs of pneumonia, and there is indeed none. Uh, she's also at risk for septic emboli, and so uh, I don't see any signs of that on her chest x-ray. And let's take a look at an x-ray of her leg and make sure that there's no fracture. Uh, there is no fracture, but there is gas visible in the soft tissue, so that's very concerning for a necrotizing soft tissue infection. So let's pick some interventions. So acetaminophen for her fever. Let's get the fever down. And I think I would want to cover her for MRSA with vancomycin. I'd want to give her clindamycin because I want to poison the ribosomes of those little bacteria so that they don't produce so many toxins that facilitate neck fash from spreading through the soft tissues. Um, and I think also covering her for uh, gram negatives with an extended spectrum penicillin is also warranted. All right, so antibiotics are on board. Her temperature has come down after the acetaminophen. Let's see how her pain is. How is the pain now? She still is having a lot of pain, so I think at this point we can give her some opioid analgesia. See if that will help. And since her lactate is elevated, I think we can give her another liter of fluid. That will help her acute kidney injury as well. At this point, I think we should talk to the surgical service. Um, so let's get them on board because I think she's going to need debridement. So they're concerned. Uh, they can take the patient to the operating room for a fascial biopsy and debridement. So rather than sticking around and getting CT imaging, I think it's safe to think about sending her to the operating room. Her pulse has come down a little bit. Her fever's down. She's gotten antibiotics. She's gotten pain control. Uh, I think we've covered pretty much everything. Let's start handing her off. So we'll prepare her for the operating room. And she clearly has a cellulitis, but now she has a necrotizing soft tissue infection. And she certainly is at risk for sepsis.